question? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you for joining me today. Um, we're going <laughs> to recap a little bit about um, what we talked about last week about walking and running shoes. And then we're also going to talk this week about some breathing techniques to increase your endurance when walking or running or going up and down stairs and that sort of thing. Um, and Brett's going to help me here again today. So I remembered, Brett, can you say hi? Um, I <laughs> remembered my uh, walking shoes today. So can you move your back there? Thank you. Okay, so I wear Adidas. Um, I got these at Christmas time, so they don't last very long. I'm, I'm about due for a new pair. Um, but this is a, a pretty good walking shoe. It's pretty cushioned. Um, it's what we talked about last week, a neutral shoe. So it has a slight curvature. If you look at the bottom of the shoe here, it's not totally straight up and down this way. It has a little bit of a curve to it, but it's not too, too flexible to where I can bend it like a noodle. Um, so this is a, a pretty good neutral shoe here. Um, and a couple other brands that we talked about last week were Asics and Brooks. Um, Nike also has a brand or a, a type called the Zoom, Z-O-O-M, kind of like what the platform we're using today. Um, and the Nike Zooms work pretty well um, for a walking shoe um, also. So a good neutral shoe is what you want, not something that's too bulky and stiff and not something that's too flexible and light. Um, you want something in the middle to help your shoe, your foot, be able to move some, be able to move uh, as what is natural, but not um, allow too much movement and to provide some cushion as well. So that's just a little recap about shoes. Do you have any questions for me about shoes? I think mine's not, mine's too stiff maybe. <laughs> what brand do you have? Uh, New Balance. Okay, New Balances are okay, um, th but there are different types within the brand that can be a little stiffer or a little more flexible. Um, the New Balance 980 is a good neutral one, but but yeah, sometimes it a, a really stiff shoe is going to typically be heavier too, um, so that the the weight can kind of clue you in on that too. Okay. Um, okay. So to talk about breathing techniques, Brett's going to help me here. Today, I wish you get in the view of the camera. Yeah, I hope it is. yeah. Okay, so what we're going to talk about is with breathing while walking or running or even going up and down stairs, you really want to make sure that you're inhaling through the nose to fully inflate your lungs and then exhaling through the mouth to fully get all of the air out of your lungs. That's gonna make you more efficient as you breathe. So Brett's gonna walk here. I'm gonna time him for about a minute. And what I want you to do with us, yeah, you can pick that up. <laughs> what I want you to do with us is breathe in through your nose for a count of three. So I'll count it out for you. And then you'll breathe out through your mouth, kind of with pursed lips. So you'll put your lips together and breathe out through your mouth for a count of two. And we're gonna practice that for a minute. So go ahead and start walking, Brett. So I'm gonna count you in. I want you to breathe in for a count of one, two, three, and out through your mouth for one, two. And again, breathe in, one, two, three, and out, one, two. Good, keep going. In, one, two, three, out, one, two. And again, one, two, three, and out, one, two, and you can relax and breathe normally. So that's a typical pattern that you can do while walking. Um, this is gonna increase your endurance, and it's also gonna help your lungs to be able to fully inflate and then fully get all of that air out like you want. And this is something that is really good if you're walking faster or if you're walking uphill or going upstairs, something that's really causes you to need more endurance. Practicing this, this pattern can help with that. So we're gonna also practice breathing during exercise today. So when you're exerting a lot of force and power, you want to breathe out. And when you're not exerting that force and power, you want to breathe in. So I'll demonstrate this for you. Well, Brett will demonstrate this for you today. So Brett's gonna start with squats, yes. Brett's gonna start with squats here. Move the camera angle, yep. So he's gonna go ahead and squat down to about 90 degrees, his knees are right over his toes. Go ahead and straighten your toes forward. Perfect, and then come back up. So in doing a squat, he's gonna breathe in on the way down and out on the way up. So go ahead and breathe in, squat down, 
breathe out and squat up. So squatting up is the most, most difficult part of this exercise, and that's where we're breathing out and exerting that force and energy when he comes up. So let's do 10 reps of those, just like that, Brett. Okay, this is one. Seven, eight, two more. <laughs> good. One more. Very good. That was good. That felt okay. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do lateral squats next. So he's going to go out to the side with his left foot. So why don't you face the camera? And you'll squat out to the side with the left foot. Now he's keeping his knee right over his toe. I don't want to see that knee coming too far forward or too far out to the side. It stays right over the foot and ankle. So on this one, when you squat down, same thing, you're gonna breathe in. And then when you squat back up, you're gonna breathe out. So go ahead, breathe in and out. That's it. Good. That's two. Going to 10. Five, six, seven. I'm not that coordinated. I get them mixed up going in and out. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> it takes some practice, this breathing. Pattern. That was 10, I think, right? Okay, go ahead and move the chair to the other side and we'll do. Yep, the right leg. So same thing. It takes a little practice, this breathing pattern. What most people want to do when they're exerting a lot of energy and force is they hold their breath. But the problem with holding your breath while you exercise is that increases your blood pressure um, when you release your breath. And that can be problematic for a lot of people. So that's why we practice these breathing techniques. It, it increases your endurance and force without spiking your blood pressure. I lost count. Are you counting? Two more. Okay. <laughs> That's one. Very good. All right. Now we're going to move to those reverse lunges. Um, yeah, you can do them that way. That's fine. Yeah. So let's go ahead with right foot going back. Yes. So knee doesn't go all <laughs> it's okay. Try again, Brett. <laughs> knee doesn't go all the way to the floor. And you can modify this and not go as far down. Um, only about halfway is probably good there, Brett. So same thing for this one. When you squat down, you breathe in. When you come up, you breathe out. How many is that? All right. Okay, one more. Very good. All right, we'll go ahead and switch sides. Let's move the chair to the other side. All right. Very good. So again, you don't have to squat all the way down, just as far as you're able. And you see his front knee, you look at this knee is right over his toes. Which is perfect. Are you counting? Six. <laughs> out. Good. In on the way down. Out on the way up. Ten. Perfect. Okay. So those were all of the exercises that we did last week. Nope. I missed one. Let's do heel raises. Single one. Let's do double. Double heel raises, you can face the chair. Yes. All right, we're moving on to heel raises or calf raises here. So Brett's gonna go all the way up on his toes. Now for this one, you wanna breathe in when the heels are flat on the floor and when Brett goes up on his toes, he breathes out. So breathe in and out. In and out. Mm -hmm. 10 of these.
Good. Got 10? You got 10. All right, so those were all of the exercises that we did last week. And now I'm gonna move on to some additional ones for this week um, that we'll teach you today. So the first one is gonna be hip extension. Last week we talked about how important it is for the hip to be able to extend backwards when you're walking to make you more efficient and a little bit faster. So we're gonna practice that here. Brett's just gonna extend the leg back and then forward again. And that's all it is. So you need to be careful with this exercise that you don't move at the back because that can be really irritating. <laughs> so keep your back straight and flat. Don't move here, only move at the hip. You put all your weight on the right foot then? Yes, all of the weight is on the right foot. You're unweighting the left foot and just kicking it straight back. Mm -hmm. What a lot of people tend to do for this one is that they lean their trunk forward like that as they extend the leg. And that's what you don't wanna do. So you wanna stay upright, keeping the back flat and just move at the hip. So I'd rather the hip not get very much motion then come too far to where you're having to lean forward. Okay. So if we incorporate breathing into this exercise, you would breathe out as the leg comes back and in as the leg comes forward. Very good. All right, let's go ahead and switch legs. And we'll move the chair to the other side. We'll do the left leg now. Same thing. So you breathe in when the feet are together and out when the leg goes back. Very good. Okay, so that was 10. So the next exercise is similar, but instead of going straight back with the leg, Brett's going in a little bit of a diagonal, kind of out to the side and a little bit behind. And you notice here his toes are also kind of turned out a little bit. So that's gonna help us activate the glute muscle at the hip is what we're going for. Same thing with this one. You don't wanna lean the trunk too far forward. And you also don't wanna hike the hip up. Yeah, that's a hip hike. So we don't wanna do that. So I want small movements at the hip that really focus on just activating that small glute muscle. So same if we were to incorporate breathing for this exercise, you would breathe in with the feet together and out as the foot goes out to the side. Are you supposed to feel it on the opposite hip? You will feel it on both sides, yes. Okay. Um, we're focusing on activating this muscle here, but because you're doing single leg balance on the opposite leg, you'll feel it on that side too. And some people feel it more so on that side. How many is that? Two more. Last one. All right, that was 10, so we'll switch sides here. Same thing on this side with the other leg. No, you're good. <laughs> you won't kick me. Mm -hmm. Yes. So breathing out as the leg comes out and breathing in as the leg goes together. Very good, that was 10. All right, one more exercise here and then we'll move on to the stretches. So this next exercise is called a fire hydrant. Um, so what Brett's gonna do is he's going to stand on one foot and bend his opposite knee. Now the hip here and the, the knee and the foot aren't really going to move at all. He's gonna keep that knee bend. All he's going to do is separate his legs out to the side and back in. 
out to the side and back in. So if you look at his knee, it's coming straight out towards you, straight out towards the camera. I don't want him coming back this way or coming forward. So he's coming straight out to the side, maintaining that knee bent. Mm -hmm. So you should feel it in those same glute muscles on the side and you may feel it on the opposite side as well. That was 10 nairs. <laughs> Those are hard, yeah. So let's go ahead and switch sides. Now with his right leg, same thing. And you have to be careful of this hip hike as well for this exercise. You don't want that hip to hike up. It should stay pretty flat. Yeah, that's a hip hike. So we just want to focus on the knee coming out and back in. So I'd rather have small controlled movements um, then larger movements that cause issues at the hip and the back. So if we incorporated breathing into this exercise, you would breathe in as the knees come together and out as they go out. Ten? Perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to stretches. So there were some stretches we, we got to last week, so I want to just recap those ones. So the first is a calf stretch, a runner stretch. So one foot is behind the other, mm -hmm. and you can see the heel on his back foot is on the floor right back here. His heel is flat, so that's really important to get a good stretch in the calf muscle. And it's good to hold these for 30 seconds. And when stretching, it's good to just breathe normally. Take deep breaths in, deep breaths out as you hold for about 30 seconds. The back is still straight? Yes, the back is straight, but you can lean the trunk forward. Okay. No, I'm guessing maybe. You can switch legs. We'll say that's about 30. Okay, so remember to take deep breaths in and out as you're doing these stretches. Now another good one to do in this position, you can just stay there, Brett, is same thing, same position, but you bend the knee, and that's going to make him feel the stretch further down towards the ankle. This gets a muscle a little bit deeper. Do you feel that? So this is another good one to do while you're doing the, the runner stretch, we call this. Go ahead and switch sides and show that knee bend on the other side, too. So that's the runner's stretch position. And if he bends that knee, he's gonna get it a little further down. Now the heel should stay on the ground ideally, but sometimes if you're really tight, the heel will come up a little bit more on this one. And that's okay. You can see Brett's heel is just a little bit off the ground. Do you still feel that stretch? Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can relax your foot there. So the next one I wanna demonstrate is the hip flexor stretch. Now we did it in the same position as the runner stretch last week. So go ahead and show that one. Well, we did it like this as well. You can show this one, that's okay. So this is the, the stretch in half kneeling, but for some people it's more difficult to get down on the knee. So let's do it in standing. So you can stand up and go in that runner stretch position with one leg behind. Mm -hmm. But this time the heel won't be on the ground. So you'll come up onto your toes and really lean forward. So this stretch, he's going to feel more in the hip because we get a little bit more extension in the hip and we don't care as much about what's happening at the ankle. So he's up on his toes now. Do you feel that? Okay. So this is a good one. And again, you hold for about 30 seconds here. There you go. 
All right, go ahead and switch sides, Brett. We'll do the, the left leg here. So again, runner stretch position, but the heel can come up off the ground. That gives your hip more extension. Feel it on that side? All right. <laughs> so again, while, while uh, stretching, take deep breaths in and deep breaths out. <laughs> All right, you can relax it. So last stretch for this week, this is one of my favorite stretches. It's called a piriformis stretch. So I'm gonna have Brett sit in the chair. And he's gonna cross one leg, so one ankle onto his opposite knee, if you can. And what you can do from this position, if you can get here, is just gently push that knee down. Go ahead and push it down. And that's gonna give a stretch to the hip muscles. So here, his left leg is crossed over and he's feeling his hip muscle stretch on the left side. So whatever leg is crossed over, that's the side that you're stretching. You feel that? Now, some people are really flexible and they don't get as much of a stretch in this position. So what he could also do is just lean forward slightly while pushing down and he'll feel it a little bit more there. Now, which side is he supposed to be feeling it on, his left? His left side. Okay, okay. So, when the left foot is crossed over, he feels it on his left hip. Okay, that's where I feel it. Perfect. All right, go ahead and switch sides there. We're gonna keep this foot pointing forward there. Oh. He had his toes pointed out a little bit, so I just adjusted them. You're <laughs> <laughs> This side hurts more. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. It's pretty common to be tighter on one side versus the other. Are you tighter on this side too, Britt? No. Your other one is tighter. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty normal. Good. You can relax there. All right, so that's all I have for you today. Do you have any questions for me? No, I asked them all along the way. <laughs> you did a great job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I needed that stretch. Good. <laughs>